Hello peoples, I uh, just thought I'd do a follow-up, kind of a follow-up review type of thing on this uh, Abeo 12 Mini Hyper ST, just so you can kind of like, you know, saw the video where I had it brand new, well, most more or less brand new, now that I've gotten a lot more time with it, i kind of give you a little more info on how it is. So first of all, the engine, yeah. That's right, I got OS 12 TG in here. Worth every penny. Cost almost as much as the kit, worth worth every penny. Uh, this engine, I'm sure it, it has potential, but it just wasn't working for me. The piston and sleeve had very little compression out of the box, so I don't know if that was a fluke or what. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'll probably mess around with this engine later, but for now, I'm running, with, I'm running the 12 TG, not looking back. So, I guess it does kind of cut against the value a little bit, but at the same time, there's nothing else like this on the market. So, take take it up for what it's worth. Um, yeah, I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Uh, Durability is pretty good. Um, you see, I got lots of dirt on it. So that's dirt is always a good thing. I mean, brand new is good, but not for very long. Nice and dirty. Not too dirty. Just dusty. <coughs> Drivetrain is really good, as you know. Most, it's a pretty well known fact. The Hyper 10 series, same chassis. Just, just this one's just slightly shorter, smaller wheels. Uh, the only thing is the uh, front CVAs, CVDs, CV. Anyways, axles. The um, they're just getting a little bit worn out, and I did have them break both of them at different times. Just the pins just broke off, just just sheared off in there which you know not too not too big a deal so you, what you can do is get replacements I got a couple of these because they have the little inside why don't we call those uh, inserts there <clears throat> these ones have a notch in them that'll keep the uh, pin from flying out or you can just use the Traxxas one yep no notch but I'm running the tracks this one on both sides and I haven't had any problems so far so like yeah that's cool anyways uh, you can fit a 12 12 a 5 cell hump pack in here uh, it, it's gonna get beat up a little bit you can see the <laughs> cell starting to shine through a little bit there a little roughed up there because you know it's just plastic against that and it's pretty tight in there you gotta you know and since I'm not running the switch, because the switch has problems, I just run directly in the receiver, so you gotta take this off every time you wanna run it, which is a little bit more work, but at least I know it's not gonna randomly shut off on me. So you gotta you know, get all the wires all, make sure they're not getting cut off and smashed and whatnot. But you know, it's it's worth it in the end, I think. Uh, what else, what else? I did have an engine mount strip out on me. I don't know if it was a fluke or whatnot or whatever, but I will say the hardware, which is you know probably not nothing new. The hardware is not that great. The, the heads, like you better have a really good quality. Like even my MIP two millimeter driver is getting <coughs> it's getting kind of worn down, and it's real easy to strip these things out. So either replace them and or get a nice new not super used two millimeter <coughs> driver because you might be stripping a few screws and that's that's not that's really bad i had that problem with the engine mount screws i mean they were just two millimeter pretty small actually so i got the ones that came with it so these are i think these are traxxas ones these are two and a half millimeter x's and that works a lot better they're they just barely fit in the holes so, but it works out, so, yeah, uh, so, you know, small stuff like that, uh, but that's, other than that, drivetrain holds up good, the, um, I haven't had any problems with the pillow balls yet, um, of course I'm not too hard on it, I just drive on a dirt track, I've got in the backyard, just, you know, topsoil sand basically here in Florida, so. Uh, nothing and no no big crazy jumps or anything 
not my cup of tea, but if it is, you probably, I don't know, I don't, I wouldn't think this would hold up if you're doing a lot of big, huge jumps. <clears throat> so you gotta kind of keep it, keep it tame, if that's how you like to drive. If not, if you don't want it this vehicle, I would say. Um, <laughs> yeah, air filter works out good. So it's got the nice mount there, so it doesn't wobble around anywhere. Um, for servo, I did put a Radio Post Signature Series in there just because I had it. I think the stock servo was sufficient, um, but you know, I still have it, but I just swapped it out for this one. It is a 25 tooth spline, so that's good. Uh, yeah, throttle servo still working out good. Mm, wheels and tires are still working good. These treads work really well on a loose topsoil type of surface where it's not hard packed. Otherwise, they wear down. I mean, these ones—they have almost no wear because you know it's just run, just running them on dirt. So it's one of the benefits of running on dirt. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, what else? Suspension—I haven't done much with that. Pretty much still stock. I haven't, I haven't touched the oils or anything. It's actually—they actually did loosen up quite a bit. Um, so. You know, it's still, I think it probably could use a little more, well, maybe a little more dampening, but I know when I first got it, they were pretty stiff, but now they're very, as you can see, it's just uh, very smooth, pretty smooth, pretty smooth, I would say. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, shocks are pretty good so far. And yeah, it's, it's a really good kit. The only non eight scale nitro four wheel drive vehicle, as far as I know, on the market. Well, on the market, kind of on the market. You can get it from, <laughs> get it from an RC shop in Italy. Yeah, but uh, you can still get parts for it in the US, at least some of them. The back plate for this came straight from Taiwan, which took like a week and a half or so. So, you know, as long as you're not in a hurry, then. <laughs> Uh, you'll be fine. <clears throat> so yeah, that's kind of my little, little overview after a couple months of running it. I'll probably get a running video here one day. Yeah, no promises, but one day. Uh, but yeah, it's it's good. Handling wise, it's not too bad. I've the steering isn't that great. Uh, I do find myself locking, going full lock left and right a lot of the time, more so than I would with a stadium truck. So I'm sure there's some tuning that can be done. <clears throat> I'm not an expert in tuning at all. I'm basically just, if it goes, I run it. If it, you know, if it runs, I just drive it within its limits, whatever the limits are. So, <clears throat> but I'm sure it could be tuned up a little bit better. I'm just not the. Not an, ex not an expert in that, but um, yeah, we're just running stock diff, stock diff fluids, front, center, and rear. Uh, it's not leaking too bad. I haven't, I haven't even opened up anything in the drivetrain. I did have one problem okay. with the. Uh, well, it wasn't really. I don't know what it was. The the, um, the brake. I think it was the front one kind of hanging up a little bit and creating some resistant rolling resistance so I don't know maybe I just need I, think, I don't know I kind of messed around with it. I think I backed off the backed off the um, little screws in there a little bit to give it a little bit more play and that seemed to seem to help I don't know but not a, <clears throat> not a big deal but yeah there you go that's the uh, little a little follow-up review kind of on the Habeo 12 Mini Hyper SD. So hopefully that was informative in some way. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.